What's up, guys? Uh, good morning. So, uh, we're gonna finish putting this 150, uh, 150 stroker Trailmaster motor together. Um, so I did do some work just to eliminate some steps. Um, went ahead and cleaned the head up and did a valve job on it. So we're ready to just put it on right now. So this way, this would be good because we can go through all the you know, getting the cam uh, dialed in and everything. So what I'm doing right here is I've got it on top dead center, okay? But while I'm at it, I'm going to grab Oh, let's see if I got a Sharpie sitting on the table. Yes, I do. So what I'm doing is I'm making a mark on a flywheel right here. That's funny because I can tell I've been on this motor before because there's already a faded Sharpie mark. But that's top dead center. All right, so as I'm putting my cam in, I can just look and my Sharpie mark will line up where I want it to. All right, so head gasket's on. I'm gonna slide her on now. All right, so we're gonna put this head on. My glasses fall off my head. There we go. I'm just checking my chain now. Chain is good. All right, I'm putting this cam back in it. So we got an A14 cam. Most of the time when the cams have a designation, so it has a 14, you basically flip it over. Always wanna make sure lobes are down. But you see there's a series of holes, and this is just this particular, there's a whole bunch of different style of cam sprockets on here. Um, so there's a bunch of holes that are the same size. I'm looking at the center one, which is slightly smaller. And then I have my two dots on the side and they have a line, and that line basically has to go parallel with the head. And compared to putting the, let me get my, um, my one guide is not cooperating, there it is. Compared to putting a uh, cam in the uh, QMK motor, this should be fairly simple. The cam got to be got in the way. All right. Yep, yeah, that looks about right. Again, she's a, she is a little tight. And that's because until I get everything torqued down and compressed or whatnot, and we have the stroker, we got our three base gasket, so everything is coming up just air. So I'm just checking my timing. It looks like it might be off and need to roll it back as sprocket. This might be a little tricky too, because we're not the standard height, deck height right now. Let's see if that looks a little better. back on purpose one let's see if that looks better to me I'm just going to put the cam bridge on, get everything pushed down, recheck it. I might take it back off and reclock it. Um, so basically, I got a dot right here and a dot here. The bottom dot is favoring out this time before it was favoring in. Theory would dictate I'd probably want the lower one in because as I put the tensioner back, it's going to tend to roll the cam back. But I think the best bet at this point is put the cam bridge back on, tighten her down, release it and then we'll see where we're at give it the old screwdriver test and see where I ended up Right where it 
should be. I kind of like it where it's at, only because let me roll it just a hair forward. Yeah, I think we're gonna leave it right there. Doing the stroker cranks with the cam because you've changed every, you know, the distance between the block and the top of the head. It shows always a little bit trickier, you know, if you just had a normal crank in and you're just putting a big bore kit in and putting a cam in it, it would line up like perfect. You wouldn't really have to watch it twice, but because we've messed with the, you know, the distance here, you know, you just want to kind of double check things. And yes, first time motor for me on this guy, you know, a lot to worry about because we got a crank that we basically took completely apart, cut down, rebuilt, slapped it back in. So I'd be lying to you if I didn't tell you that I'm just trying to make everything as good as possible, which is why I opted to tear the whole motor down and put everything kind of new. I didn't want... If the cam is the problem, I'll want to find out. I don't want to have to wonder if I should blame another part in here that was, you know, older or used or whatever. So, um, we're going to go ahead and torque it down. try to go in diagonals when I'm doing it. Okay. We are ready for our touch nut. Got our gasket and our bolt all set. Preload this thing. Retracting the tensioner all the way up before I drop it down. I'll start my bolts with my fingers. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and roll the motor over now. Just make sure everything's good. I haven't checked my valve lash, so. Everything feels as it should. That's where my cam is. Center. Yep. My mark is slightly off on my flywheel only because now I have tension with the, the chain. So I'm going to make a new mark here. Now at this point, I have to gather up the plastics, valve cover, and I think just for the point, he didn't send it with clutching, because he was trying to make the package lighter. I'm gonna stick some clutching on it um, when I put it on the stand, just so everything is the way it should be. And um, we check the fluids, put some oil in it, get it on the stand, fire it up. Hopefully you have some success. All right, we got the motor on the stand. 
went ahead and put the cover on. I did put some clutching in here. We bolted up an exhaust that I just, it's unpainted. I just leave it around for testing motors. Um, we put our oil in it. So at this point, what we're gonna do, what I'm gonna do is there's two things I do before I start every motor, and A is pre-oil. So right now we have oil in the bottom of the motor. All right, it's all sitting in the crankcase. Other than whatever lube and oil I put, you know, put during assembly, um, what I like to do is get the oil circulated from top to bottom. So usually what I do is, um, you know, wire it all up, put my quart of oil in, take the spark plug out, and just turn the motor over. And what I'm doing is just getting the oil pump, the circulate oil up to the top end, okay? Um, and I'm not going to lie to you, I already pre-oiled it before we uh, we started filming. I just have it. Um, normally, when you first turn the motor over, you'll actually hear it tend to speed up a little bit. And that kind of lets you know that the oil's making its way up to the top and everything's getting less friction. Okay. Um, next thing what I'm going to do, I haven't done this yet. Uh, I'm going to do a compression check. Before I put my spark plug in, I put my compression tester in there. And what this tells me, especially with like customers motors, with race motors, well not so much with race motors because we're always running race fuel in them at this point. Um, but with the customers motor, it kind of lets me, gives me an idea how much jetting, you know, like um, higher compression motors are going to require more jet and a higher octane fuel than a lower compression motor. Um, I don't know what kind of news I'm going to give this guy yet because usually I try to make my motors so they are um, so they are um, you know under uh, under 200 so they're gonna run pump gas with the stroker in here being a 61 I don't know where I'm gonna be and we didn't really think of that when we talked about it so I'm gonna hand this to, can you given that to bend the cameraman so you can hold the throttle wide open and I'm gonna go ahead and turn the key I'm going to do it at like five cranks because that's how I do all my motors just to give me a baseline of where they're at. So. What do I got there, Ben? Can you see it? Around 200. Right around 200. Now, that's a four crank. So I know every motor that I do is at the same. Now, if I let this thing go. And it just stopped. And that's 250. The reason I do it at four cranks is because I want a baseline. So how bad is this motor at four cranks? So everything's the same. Um, if I let them go, some will go to 225, 230, 250. I've had a couple go to 270s. Um, so this tells me I would recommend that he's running a high octane gas at the very least and to be very, very... Um, conscientious of his jetting all right because what we don't want to do is lean this motor out and, and, and kill it so I'm gonna go ahead and put the spark plug in we're gonna fire it up for the first time hopefully hopefully we're good I'm a little nervous all right so just to be clear 150 internal reverse motor. Actually, the designation on this is a little different, but these are the motors that come in your Trailmaster GTS, your carbides, all your American Sportworks buggies, Helix carbide, your Trailmasters, and <laughs> I don't have my glasses on, but it's JL1P, almost my initials, JL1P57F, and just to give you an idea, two, two shift cable motor, um, standard uh, AK spacing, no stroke or crank available. So as far as I know, I mean, you cannot find a stroke or crank that'll fit this because it's just an odd crank in there. So this will, this will be the first here. <sighs> you nervous? No. Nah. All right. There we go. Oh, yeah. She ain't gonna start. Spark plug wire. There we go. Hmm, compression.
looks like I've got a internal reverse 180 motor here. So usually when you add a 3.0 cranker, as far as the math that I've done, um, no matter what you come up with, with a three millimeter stroke crank, um, you just add 10 cc's. That seems to be the basic math. So give you an example. Um, with a with the normal crank, you're looking at 169 point something cc's. I think it's 169 point either five or nine. I can't remember. Um, so basically a 170. Uh, with the stroker crank, you add 10 cc. So it's, it's definitely a 180. Um, trying to think if we put a 63 millimeter in here. I want to say with a 63 with a standard, it puts you around 180 also. So adding a three millimeter stroker to it would put you at 190 cc's roughly. So this is a 180 cc motor. So this is uh, out of the two stroker projects that, you know, non-stroker crank machine or motor platforms that we've got. The first one is done. So what I will do is I will run this on a stand, give it a couple of heat cycles and whatnot. And then after that, basically this guy is going in a box and getting shipped to Illinois. Um, and then hopefully I'll get feedback and, you know, maybe I'll do a short or something, you know, I'll, I'll correspond with the owner or whatnot and to let me know. I'm eager to know power wise, how we're doing and everything. If you can feel a difference he had, um, he had the 61 millimeter dropping kit in this before. So he, he was basically running a 170. Now he'll be running a 180. Uh, hopefully we'll get our jetting right. I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and let this heat cycle and then you know we'll let it fly so i'm really happy with the way this all is turning out right now pretty satisfied now it's just a matter of time does it hold up um you know um we manipulated the crank in a few different ways i'm pretty confident that will be good uh but i don't i don't think the crank knows what motor it's in so but it seems to be that everything lined up and everything worked out perfect so uh, we'll get this one shipped off, and then we'll finish up the, like I said, I, I need to order a couple things for the QMK, and we'll get the QMK on here and fire it up, and uh, again, it'll be pretty much another 180 motor, um, but on a platform that you normally couldn't get a stroker crank for. So, once we get these field tested, you know, this guy runs the, the hell out of this, and, and I'm satisfied that, that it's good to go, we'll start making, uh, you know, the cranks for this and the QMK available. And, you know, we just, I got to do some math. Um, like I said, there's, there's a, a very hard to get bearing that I can only find in Europe, apparently, to make this one work. And then there's some late time, more so actually on this motor. We had to manipulate this crank more because of the bearing situation and, and the spacing on the cam gear than we actually had to do on the, um, the QNK. So, um, that being said, motor one down, I'm really happy, actually. I'm warm and fuzzy inside at the moment. So, uh... That's it for now. If you need parts, go to gotbuggies.com. If, uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section. And hit the like button if you like what you're seeing. And if you haven't already, subscribe. And again, thank you guys. Appreciate it. JD's out.